Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the talk on Trimaran Load, load Aware uh, Scheduler Plugins. My name is Asher Tantawi from IBM Research, my colleague. Uh, my name is Chen Wang. I'm also uh, working in IBM Research. And we have been working in these scheduler plugins for years. All right, so let me walk you through, or both of us, we're going to walk you through the Trimaran if you haven't heard about it. It's a family of scheduler plugins that are load aware, and there is three of them. It's a bit confusing, and we're trying to resolve that here, uh, make a distinction between the, the three plugins that exist. They are all upstream. You can download them and try them if you haven't yet. And we're going to show you some use cases and demos of what these Trimaran plugins do. So the, the alarms that you might see in, in your cluster that some nodes uh, may be uh, experiencing high load congested and others are not, or that some nodes have spiky uh, kind of uh, uh, CPU and or memory uh, load, whereas others are not. And you may have in your cluster some uh, pods that are able to get up to their limits, whereas others in the same cluster cannot. These are all symptoms of uh, a need for one of the Trimaran plugins. This is not necessarily true that Trimaran will solve these. This might be due to other cases, but we just list them as um, uh, motivation for, for, for the need of a Trimaran plugin. Trimaran is load aware, as I said, and it, it relies on the load watcher, which is an open source uh, piece of uh, a component that Chen and others have been working on. And you can see in the diagram here, it relies on either the metric server, Prometheus server, or, or some other uh, signal FX server, and will it will get all the metrics for utilization of CPU and memory, both averages and variations around the average, and will expose that through Prometheus. And that's what the Trimaran uh, plugins use through Prometheus. Those uh, metrics, uh, they, they are smoothed through the load watcher and used by the Trimaran plugins. All right, so what are the goals of these uh, three plugins? Uh, they kind of have separate, separate goals, and that's why we have three of them. So the first one tackles the energy. It works to get the, uh, the node utilization. Uh, currently, it's only CPU, but hopefully we're going to ex expand that to other resources, such as GPU and others. Uh, to get the utilization around a particular target utilization. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the second plugin is about avoiding congestion and interference. It avoids the, a lot of spiky kind of behavior in, in load distribution on a node and will place the, the pods away from nodes that have those spikes. And the third one has to do with risks due to limits. So. Uh, as you know, the default scheduler does not consider limits at all. It just works with the request. Whereas the Trimaran third plugin takes the limits into consideration. The reason being that it allows or will let the, the pods that need to burst and reach their limits to reach their limits freely as much as possible. All right, so this is in a table format. The official names of these plugins, I've been calling them the first, second, and third, and that's the order in time that they, they have been created and also the order in their complexity. Uh, but they are called the target load packing. So, so the first one packs to reach a target utilization. The second one is about balancing the variation in the, the utilization and, as well as variation. And the third one is about the, the limits or the risk over commitment. In terms of their usage of the load awareness, the first one utilizes only the average. Second one is the average and the variation around that. That's the standard deviation. And the third one deals with the tail of the distribution. So the entire distribution, not only the, the average and standard deviation. It builds a, or it fits the distribution to it and uses the tail to make its decisions. And as you see down there, the three goals that I talked about before. Uh, so let's talk about the first one. Target load packing. 
So as I said, there is a particular utilization that an administrator or the, the one who configures this uh, plugin would set the utilization uh, to be that target. Currently, as I said, it's only, it only works with CPU, device, uh, CPU resources. Uh, this picture here depicts uh, the, that there is always a sweet spot for utilization. What you see up here is some study that looks at two uh, devices or two resources, the CPU and disk, and it shows that there is a sweet spot in utilization that you want to operate at that point. Um, at a very high level, as I stated up there, let's talk about CPU, for example. Uh, power consumption, as you know, the power, power is a rate of energy. And power typically increases. It starts with an idle power at a utilization of zero, and it keeps increasing in some form, whether it's convex or, com or concave or almost linear. But the power increases as utilization increases. But power is not everything. If you have been to the talk yesterday about peaks, uh, it deals with power and finds the, the, the sweet spot for power. Here we're talking about energy. There's some other aspects in here. When, when you run in a node that is a very highly utilized, even though hypothetically, ideally, containers should be performance isolated, but they are really not. There are some resources that are congested, networking, buses, NV links and what have you. So you start, performance starts to suffer. Uh, as well as when you reach a very high utilization, then you, there are other aspects such as the fan starts to go on and then you lose some, some, uh, some energy that way. So that's why you don't want to be very close to the 100%. You want to be a little before that. And whatever that value is, is going to set by the, the administrator or the one who's configuring this to reach that to operate at that point. How does the plugin work? So to reach that target, as you can see here, a depiction of a cluster with three uh, nodes. Uh, the dotted line, the, the dotted uh, line there is the utilization. The blue is, this is not the allocated or requested, this is the average kind of load. Uh, so what happens is the plugin will start to place pods on the first node until it, it reaches the, the target utilization, or about, you know, and then it, it's gonna take the second node and it reaches that and so on. So it's basically doing packing at that point. Or during that phase, it's doing packing. Whenever the cluster reaches its target utilization on all nodes, approximately, beyond that, you don't wanna get close to 100%. So what happens is beyond that, it's gonna try to spread the pods across the nodes in the cluster so that you don't go far away uh, close to 100% and try to be close to the, the target utilization. Forgot to mention that the three trimaran plugins are all score plugins. And they, they use some, some basic common uh, uh, components. I talked about load watcher before. So it's really easy to add a fourth and a, and a fifth, if you will, trimaran plugin. I invite you all to do so. Uh, you can see the score function here is familiar with, with the scoring function that this particular plugin works with. Let me move on to the second one. So the second one is not about average. It takes the spiky nature of the utilization into consideration. And it deals with both CPU and memory. Uh, we're hoping to add GPU to it, um, but that's where we are at this point. Here is a depiction of two nodes, node one on the left, node two on the right. They are both at the same total requested, so that's what the default scheduler cares about. Um, a, load, a load aware would, would look at the green, which is the average utilization. Again, it's the same, about the same for node one and node two. The only difference is that the variation around the average is a lot less for node one than node two. Node two is a lot spiky still around the same average. So if you have a new pod, where would you place it? On node one or node two? So obviously you wanna place it on node one so that it doesn't suffer with this due to the spikiness and the interference with other containers running on that node. And that's exactly what the load variation risk balancing plugin do. And the way it does that 
if you think about balancing a cluster, um, this diagram is a bit involved, but let me walk you through it very uh, quickly. Uh, what you see here is a space that on the x-axis I call mu and the, the y-axis is sigma. Mu stands for the average utilization and sigma stands for the standard deviation of utilization. That's the spikiness, the variation, right? And a dot is a node in the cluster. Each dot is a node in the cluster. All the dots in the space are, are the, all the nodes in the cluster, right? So depending on the utilization average and standard deviation of that node, that's where the dot lies in that space. So typically people, when they talk about load balancing, they average, they, they balance the average, and that's the top left uh, case there, that all the nodes line up so that they have the same average. But you might have some nodes very low in variance and others very high in variance, no good. Uh, another possibility is to, va to balance the variability. They all have the same spikiness, but some nodes are very low in utilization average and others are high, no good either. And on the bottom left is the coefficient of variation, if you're familiar with that. That's the, uh, the, the standard deviation over, over average and you try to line them up, that's no good either. And what this trimaran plugin, the uh, load variation risk balancing does, it, it tries to place the nodes along that l red line. What is that red line? That's mu plus sigma equals a constant. Why mu plus sigma? If you're familiar from statistics, you know, we have some kind of distribution, mu plus sigma means something, mean that most of your, uh, your data is gonna be in that range, mu plus sigma. So mu plus sigma would like two thirds of, the, of your data is gonna be there. Mu plus two sigma is gonna be more. Mu plus six sigma is gonna be everybody. Um, but the default is mu plus sigma, but it's a parameter that you can specify in this plugin which is a multiplier for sigma. For now, let for simplicity is mu plus sigma. Why is that good? So if you see some dots here at the very right, this is a node that has high utilization, let's say 90% utilized, but it's very flat. Whereas one on the left is like a 20% utilization and, and very spiky or 40% utilization and very spiky. And they are kind of equal. And as far as this plugin is concerned, I'm taking a lot of time here. I try to go a little faster. Okay, here is an example of a, a three node cluster with some data about the current utilization. And in the same space that I talked about before, load on the X axis, variation on the Y axis. And you, you see the three, dot, the three nodes the red one, green one, and blue one, as far as the CPU resources and the memory resource. That's the top, the before placement case. Before placement, meaning I now have a pod I need to place, where should I place it, okay? Remember that we're trying to balance the nodes uh, on a line. So the, obviously the one that is furthest away from the line is the red one. So you try to bring in the red one closer to the other two. And then we compare the both CPU and memory and the one that is furthest away is the one that's gonna impact the, the score of that node. And after we place the, the pod, then you see the red dot got a little bit closer to where the others are. And you keep doing this one after the, um, one at a time, then the nodes are gonna line up. Of course, they will never line up perfectly, but as much as possible. All right, uh, the third plugin is the, is the low risk overcommitment. And as I said before, this one deals with uh, the limits in addition to requests uh, to allow containers uh, in a pod to reach their limit whenever uh, that is possible. Use cases, spring boot. Uh, that if you have many containers that they have an init container, many pods, they have an init container that spikes. It does a lot of, it needs to do a lot of work, uh, let's say on CPU, and then it kind of dies away. The regular main container doesn't do much. So if you have a lot of these pods running at the same time, at time zero, you have an issue. And so you want to place them, to place these pods across your cluster, not on the same node. 
And that's exactly what the low risk over commitment does. Um, all right, I'm gonna have to be a little fa quick here. I'm not gonna walk you through this. What this trimaran plugin looks at two things. One is the value of the limit as specified by the containers in the pod, and secondly, the load awareness. Why is that? Because the first one is a, a, a container is telling you this is my limit. I'm planning to reach up to that limit. Whether I will do it or not is a separate story, but there's a potential, we don't know that, potentially that container may reach that limit. So you have to consider, take that into consideration. And that's the first component that this plugin considers, it is the limit awareness. The second one is, is it, are the containers running on a node really going beyond the requested and going into their limits or not? And how much are, how much of them are are really reaching the element. And that's what we get from the load watcher and, and the observation of the utilization. So given that, that's why I would say we have to look at the tail of the distribution. We have to look at how much really utilization is above the requested into the limits. And I think the demo is gonna clarify that. And these two factors, we have a weighted sum and that weight is, is a configurable value. The default is a half, but you can configure it differently for CPU and memory, for example. And I think I'm gonna stop here and let uh, Chen walk you through the demo. Yeah, well, uh, you think uh, I always intrigued by those uh, interesting theory and then, um, but here I just want to share a very, uh, uh, very simple, very uh, extremely simple three demos to give you an intuition. Um, actually in production environment, which use case, which types of load you want to use, which uh, scheduler plugin. And here is the barcode. We have the whole tutorial to simply deploy those scheduler plugins in one click. Feel free to scan it. And uh, so to demonstrate that the target load packing plugin, we are emulating a very simple scenario with three node cluster here. And then, um, so those three nodes are configured differently uh, with some background uh, load. So for example, the first load node has a low allocation, but actual usage is really high. The second node is like the pods placed on it have the request um, matching what is actually using and the third one is underutilizing. So how will the target load packing plugin really behave in this scenario? Uh, let's just work through the demo. So simply, if you download the previous folder from GitHub, you would have this target load packing uh, YAML um, deployment. It includes all the service account necessary, all the cluster role definitions, and you combine those with the um, cluster or binding to your namespace and to your scheduler um, plugin. Uh, deployment here, we deploy this target load packing plugin uh, as a secondary scheduler in your cluster so the testing pod can select it afterwards. Okay, so we go ahead. Um, th this network policy is just to allow your Prometheus access uh, to all your uh, secondary scheduler. Um, you can define similar things if you compare your own uh, secondary scheduler based on those scheduler plugins. So we go ahead to create the deployment for this target load packing scheduler. Granting access to Prometheus. And uh, let's see if the scheduler is running. Uh, so get the pod. Uh, we want to watch the pod logs in real time. Okay, the logs seems fine. And then we have the scheduler running, secondary scheduler running, which runs the target load packing plugin. And then um, 
in the background, we already deployed three types of workload, just matching the, uh, the example I showed in the previous slides. So this is our cluster state. We actually force those uh, background workload on different nodes. So we know the first one, we have a high utilization with spawn like stressing CPUs to three, but actually we only allocate 200 melee cores uh, for the request. So the allocation is well below the actual utilization. And yeah, the second one is matching. I, I probably skipped that. The third one is really, it, it's doing nothing, sleeping, but it's also requesting some usage. So we also have the dashboard all available in the uh, dashboard folder. Uh, you can check on the GitHub link. Uh, so for the testing, it's pretty simple. It's using one CPU, but allocating 500 millicores and the limit is one. And specifically, we use the trimaran scheduler uh, to schedule this part. So if we go ahead, create this testing part, uh, we will see uh, we enable all the logs, of course, for demo purpose. And then it will successfully bind to the second node, which IP ends with five. And you can see it's because Tremoran is really uh, scoring the middle node highest. And then if we go back to the Grafana dashboard, we can see, um, so actually the highest utilization is first one. Here for the configuration, we actually configure the target load packing to target 70% of utilization. And then the middle one is using kind of half of the utilization so it doesn't get to the 70% yet. The third one is pretty empty. So we make sure we pack the the, the, the testing workload to the second one to make sure all the nodes achieve 70% until we start packing to the third. So the benefit of this one is for the third node, you really, it's empty, you can um, pack it later and the, for the second one, as Arthur mentioned, if we target 70%, the, the, your target utilization is 70%, then uh, you can achieve some efficiencies as needed. Uh, you also leave certain margin, uh, safety margin for your workload if it varies a lot. Okay. I think uh, that's the first one. So it really goes to the, to, the, to the middle node. Then we change the scenario a little bit. And then we still have the high utilization, but also add high variations of the first one node, but with low allocation. Uh, for the second node, we have something, the average utilization matching the allocation, but with some variations. Uh, so remembering that Arthur was mentioning that the, uh, the load variation risk balancing is all about understanding the variation of load on, uh, on your node. And the third one is really a steady usage uh, with uh, little variations. We can be a little bit quick here. Um, similarly, we have this deployment and uh, some parameters we need to configure for the load variations are well documented on the scheduler plugins repo. Um, basically here you want to configure the, um, the safe variation margin and the safe variation sensitivity. Those two parameters are actually um, the related to how many times of the variation you want to multiply upon the mean. Uh, in your scoring function. Okay, if we go ahead, create the, the Tremoran scheduler with load variation risk balancing plugin and show the logs as well. Similarly, we uh, take a look, quickly take a look about all the background and then 
I'm sure you already get the gist of uh, how we emulate the background load in this case. Worker one, uh, instead here we have some variations. So we only have a spiky workload for five minutes and drop a to zero for five minutes with nothing. And uh, so the average utilization here, you can think of is the CPU should be two, but the request we uh, allocate is only one. So it's under allocation. Uh, and the second one, we just, uh, the request kind of matches the utilization uh, a little bit, still a little bit below. So the request is two. The peak CPU load we are adding is five. The third one we are just stressing, and then the request for CPU is two, the usage for CPU is also two, and then uh, limit is four, uh, so it, we don't have any uh, variations, tie, tie, overtime variations of the load on the node. Okay, similar, we have a simple test pod uh, with load two and requesting only 500 millicores. So uh, there are four nodes. The left one starts with uh, IP4, and then the last one uh, ends with IP6. And then you can see uh, on, on uh, point 0.4 node and point 0.5 node, they have high variations usage. And the uh, um, limit is, of course, way beyond the um, allocable. And then uh, just for the third one, you have more stable utilization. In this case, because uh, load variation risk balancing is trying to minimize the risk the cost by the load variations, so it will prefer the third node, which ends with six. I think we can quickly um, skip to the third one. The third one is simple. It's just instead of deploying the uh, high variation load on the node two, we copy the same load from the node three to node two. However, for node two, the background uh, workload really requires a really high limit. The limit is much higher than the allocable. And then for the third one, we are conservative. We estimate the limit more accurately for the background workload. So the limit is actually below the allocable. And then let's see what will happen this time. Again, there's a parameter cost uh, risk limit weight, right? You can uh, specify by author's formula, you can kind of understand whether you want to assign higher weight uh, to, the, uh, to the risk of not, uh, not hitting the high limit, or you can assign more weight to avoid the risk of lo the load. So here we configure, because we don't really add any load on memory, uh, we don't consider the limit of memory, so we configure memory limit as one and the CPU uh, parameter says 0 0.5, which balance the risk of limit, exceeding the limit and the risk of load. So quickly we deploy the uh, third scheduler with the uh, plugin the Trimonus 3 plugin. And in the background, we also have three types of different background workload. Um, first one, high variations and um, low request again. Uh, this time, the first node ends up with 16. Second one, very stable workload with the matching request and the high limit. 
which is way beyond the usage. And the node ends up with 17. The third one is limit matches the request matches the actual usage. So you can see 17 and um, 18 nodes that with steady utilization around 0 0.5. And the first one is have, having average usage of 0 0.5, but with uh, higher variations. And then um, presumably, if you have higher variations, you have a higher risk of overloading. So apparently 16 is not preferred and then for 17 and 18, they really have the exactly the same usage, but 18 is more conservative in terms of allocating la uh, limit. So uh, the total limit on the node is way beyond the allocatable. And let's see what Tremor 3 will do. Okay. Of course, uh, in all the testing part, we force them to use Tremor and Scheduler. <laughs> and you can see it successfully bound the part to uh, the node ending up with 18 because 18 apparently has a, a lower risk in exceeding the allocable in, term, in, in, in limit. I think that ends up with all our demos and if you have more questions and feedback, please let us know.